Welcome everybody to episode 5 of Maxing a Main. It's our very first day here in a member's world, so it's finally time for us to do some members activities. There are a number of things that I do want to do on this account in this video, starting with the Varrock Museum. That way we can get level 9 Slayer and level 9 Hunter, and after we do that, I'll be able to use the lamp that's in my inventory that I just got from a Beekeeper's random event on Slayer. The reason I want to use the lamp after I'm done with the Varrock Museum quiz is because if I use the lamp now, I'll only get 10 Slayer XP, but if I use it when I have level 9 Slayer, I will be able to get 90 XP. Some other things I want to do in this video is do the Children of the Sun quest. That'll give me access to Varlamore. I have never even seen any gameplay of Varlamore except for some people getting the quiver thing for some PKing videos, but I have actually no idea anything about Varlamore whatsoever. So that's going to be something cool that we can do. And I'm pretty sure you start that in Varrock and that it doesn't have any requirements. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I guess we'll find out. But another really big thing that I want to get done in this video is level 60 agility. I know that's a really crazy thing to want to do as soon as you become a member. It's train arguably the worst skill in the game, but we really, really need to get level 60 agility because our run regen is so, so bad. And I think if we get to level 60 agility, I should have enough marks of grace in order to get a full graceful set. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it sounds about right. And the method that I want to use to get a nice head start on agility training is by completing the tourist trap quest. Completing the tourist trap gets you two XP lamps in either agility, fletching, smithing, or thieving, and it also allows you to smith darts. So not only should I be getting 9,300 XP in agility, but it will also unlock the cheapest method to train smithing, which is making darts. And depending on the material of the bars you're using to make darts, sometimes you could even make money smithing. So really, completing the tourist trap is a win-win. However, in order for me to do that, I am going to need level 10 fletching. And I'll get that as soon as I'm done here at the Varrock Museum. And all right, I believe we are done here with this quiz. And let's get these rewards here. We now got 1,000 XP in both Hunter and Slayer, bringing us up to level 9 Slayer and 9 Hunter. We can now use our XP lamp on Slayer, which brings us only 64 XP away from level 10 Slayer. But now that that's done, let's head over to the Grand Exchange and get 10 Fletching so that we can start the Taurus Trap. And there we go, level 10 Fletching in a matter of like a minute and a half, not even. All right, looks like we have everything that we need in order to complete the Taurus Trap. I did just think of an idea, though. I'm going to actually do Gertrude's cat first. That way, I can have a cat that's being raised while I'm doing Taurus Trap because I'm pretty sure I need a fully grown cat for some quest. I don't have a clue which one it is. All I remember is I saw a YouTube video before where someone needed a cat for a quest. I'm honestly not too sure, but I do know that I need a cat eventually. So let's get that done first. And here we go. Gertrude's cat has been... Is there a thing? There's no thing. Oh, there it is. Okay, that took a while. But uh, yeah, we get a quest point. We also get 1500 cooking XP. I did not know that. I forgot about that. Then we get a kitten, a chocolate cake, and some stew. Don't really need any of that stuff. Just brought us up to 36 cooking, which is very nice because now we have a cat. <coughs> This might seem really insignificant, but to me, it is not. This is our very first member's teleport using a piece of teleporting jewelry. It's not really too special, but I just wanted to put it in the video. Hey guys, just want to take a second and say thank you so much for all of the support you've been giving me throughout the series. My goal of this year is to reach 10,000 subscribers before January 1st, 2025, and I really do believe that we can achieve that goal together. So if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. And if you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to hit that like button as well. Thanks guys. And the Taurus trap has been started. I have actually done this quest in the past on my level three skiller, but I didn't finish the quest because you don't need to. You only need to get up to the part in order to smith darts. And that's the reason why I was doing this quest to begin with. I was able to recoil this guy all the way down to no health, but it was a very, very close fight. And I literally had to use my very last piece of food in order to complete the kill. So hopefully on this account, I'll be able to knock this level 47 out and uh it seems like he doesn't have a lot of health it says here that he has 80 but there's no way because i am destroying this guy my very first hit hit him for half health so i don't know if someone wounded him before or if this is even going to count and it does count wow so somebody came here and wounded him and didn't finish the kill <laughs> wouldn't that be funny if it was a skiller oh my god i'd feel so bad oh i didn't follow the directions get out get out get out I, I left! I left! Oh my god, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, not like it even matters. I'm over here. 
Good thing I brought the knife to cut this water skin because they took all my water skins. Okay, so it appears like it is impossible to get water out of this place. Oh my god, attempt number two at getting some water from these cacti. And once again, I am zero for three. So all in all, I am zero for six getting some freaking water out of these things. All right, so that's zero for seven. Zero for eight. This is 100% the guy that I stole the kill from. Wow, this is actually crazy. I'm like zero for 11. Does this go off of your woodcutting level? Is that why it's giving me woodcutting XP when I'm doing this? Because I'm zero for 12 at this exact moment. Zero for 13. Give a swordfish to the cat so he doesn't run away. Zero for 14. Zero for 15. I don't even care if I fill up this water skin at this point. I just want to see how many it takes. Because I am zero for 16. Zero for 17. Zero for 18. Zero for 19. There we go. We finally got one sip on our 20th one. Oh, I just realized getting water into a water skin in the desert is an easy task in the desert area. I genuinely forgot about achievement diaries, so we are for sure going to have to complete some of those in the future. Okay, so I brought three bars because I said the first one might not be successful, and it was not successful. So hopefully the second bar here is successful because I don't want to have to run all the way back. Oh my god, no shot. Okay, here we go again. Attempt number three. If I don't get this, I have to teleport out of here. Oh my god, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I don't gotta run all the way back. And just by the skin of our teeth, we managed to create a prototype dart. The fact that I can fit a barrel with a human being inside of it in my inventory and only take up one inventory slot is insane, by the way. Like, where am I even keeping her? I don't even have a backpack on. But apparently I have a whole woman in a barrel in my backpack. Get out! Get out of here! The ship! <clears throat> Bro, there's no way I just took one damage from trying to get inside of a minecart. And here we go. We're going to choose agility, which got us all the way up to level 20 agility. And then we're going to choose agility again which got us all the way up to 26 agility. We can now use the Falador agility shortcut, which is very cool. And the tourist trap has been completed, giving us two quest points, access to the desert mining camp. I don't know why I'd ever want to go back there. The ability to make darts and our 26 agility, and also a total of 47 quest points. So at level 26 agility, we could do the Alcarid rooftop course, which is very convenient because we're already here. So I'm going to do this course until probably level 35, and then I'll switch over to the Varrock rooftop course don't want to switch over exactly at level 30 because at that point i will fail quite a lot hey it's the second ever feather donation from jaunt oh my god no way what 10 million feathers oh my god it's like 20 mil if they sell for two each 10.2 million feathers it's instantly a green feather stack thank you so much jaunty that's super generous of you man oh my god what a cool guy man by the way, if you guys ever want to donate feathers, I'm not allowed to sell them. I'm just collecting them purely for fun and as a community collection to see how many feathers we can collect. I do have high scores at the end of every video showing the top five all-time feather donators. So yeah, if you guys want to donate, hit me up in-game. My username is Relic, and then a space, and then RS. Just PM me, and if I'm paying attention, I will let you know where I am in-game, and you can come and donate some feathers. But man, Jaunty, thank you so much, man. It brought our feather stack all the way up to 13 mil. If all of these sold for 2 GP each, that's a 26 mil feather stack. That's so crazy. I can't even believe it. Just got another drill sergeant event. And what we ended up getting was the camo bottoms to go with the camo top that has the rune breasts in it from last episode. Both the camo top and bottom are extremely ugly, but maybe they might look better as a set. And it is not good looking. No, it is not. We're going right back in the bank. Also, I have yet to start training agility. I've been sitting here editing the beginning of this video for like the last hour, but we did also get a quiz master random event, and I chose the mystery box because we still need to get the stale baguette, and let's see if we got it. No. Apparently, we got nothing. Oh, you get nothing! You lose! Okay, so I finally started training agility. And as soon as we did, on the second lap, our kitten has grown into a healthy cat that can hunt for itself. There it is. Absolutely beautiful. By the way, I don't know why I could see through the floor here, 
I guess technically it's the roof, but but yeah, I don't know why I could see through the roof. I thought maybe it was under the hide roof settings, but it's not. And the only reason I thought that is because it's not in the 117HD settings or the GPU settings. So like the actual game right now, regardless of your graphics setup, doesn't have a roof. You can see through it on all of these places. I don't know why that's a thing, but I am going to pick up my cat and keep him in my inventory and then put him in the bank forever because I'm pretty sure having an overgrown cat does not fit the requirements of whatever quest I need a cat for. Okay, so this is really annoying. The Mark of Grace is right here. It's right here. Can I pick it up? The answer is no. I can see it on the map, but I cannot pick it up. Why can I not pick it up? Because it's not spawning, because I can't see what's on this roof. Even if I turn off GPU and have the default client like this, I still can't do anything. Even if I turn on 117, I still cannot do anything. But there's nothing I could do, and I don't know how to fix it. Six and a half hours later. Oh. It was low detail mode. If for whatever reason, you're playing with low detail mode like I do, and you cannot pick up a Mark of Grace, apparently the rooftops are now considered low detail because I had high lower planes. Nope, that's not right. Okay, yeah, no, I was right. You can't have low detail on while you are doing agility, apparently. All right, we just got our first ever maze random event on this account. So if we get some good rewards, it might actually like double our bank account. That'd be very nice. We didn't do too bad. We got 64%. I could have just got 65. I didn't realize I actually had to click on the stone. But as a reward, this is what we got. Totaling out to 18.4K. I'm going to go drop this stuff off in the bank. We're also at 20 marks of grace, as you can see here. We just hit level 36 agility. I decided I'm going to wait to level 36 instead of level 35 to switch to Ferrock. And because we just hit level 36 agility, I am going to head over there right now. I'm also going to want to switch to Canifis at around level 44. So that means that we're going to have to do the Priest in Peril quest. And I haven't done that quest in literally 10 years because it gives prayer XP and none of the accounts that I play on were able to get prayer XP. Also, speaking of prayer, I'm tired of looking at level 9 prayer. I'm going to run over to this altar first thing and get my prayer points charged up. But yeah, once we get to level 43 or 44 agility, I'm going to go do Priest in Peril. And then we're going to head on over to Canifis. Okay, and another quiz master event has been completed, giving us another book of knowledge that we are going to use on Slayer, which should bring us up to level 10 Slayer. It's always good to get low level Slayer levels out of the way as quickly as possible, because with lower level tasks, you barely get any XP. And here we go. Level 40 agility. We can now use the Canifis course in Relica, but we are going to be sticking here until about level 44. But I did want to record this because level 40 agility is now our highest stat on this account. I seriously cannot believe that agility of all skills is our top stat right now. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a good thing that agility is the highest stat that we have, but I'm not going to lie. It is also extremely depressing. God, I hate this skill so much. And here we go. Level 44 agility. We can now use the Trollheim Advanced Cliffside Scramble. No clue what in the world that is. But since we are level 44, I might get level 45 before we go over to Canifis. Um, yeah, I'll get to level 45 and then we will go do Priest in Peril. I just don't want to be failing the obstacles all the time. And there we go, level 45 agility. So let's go grab the stuff that we need to do Priest in Peril. Priest in Peril has been started, and this is the weirdest inventory of stuff I've ever had. The runes I'm bringing are for Crumble Undead, because I'm pretty sure that the thing that we have to fight is considered a skeleton. I'm not 100% sure if that dog is considered a skeleton or not. But regardless, we're still going to be trying out Crumble Undead. I don't even know how good it is. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Enemies to defeat, Temple Guardian, you cannot use magic. Oh, that's annoying. I'm going to try out Crumble Undead anyway, just to see if it works. It probably won't because it specifically says that. And it appears that our spells don't affect it. And I got to do another trip from Varrock. That is, <laughs> that's so annoying. I literally had no idea that you couldn't use magic during this quest. All right, attempt number two. I brought my adamant scimitar, a strength ammy, and that's it. I also brought a swordfish just in case. But I think we should be good here, hopefully. And that was super easy. We only took one damage. Not too bad. Now let's head back to Varrock so that we could tell him that we killed this dog that we shouldn't have killed. All right, take my rune essence. And now we need 26 more. So we got to head back to Varrock, unfortunately, yet again. And here we go. 
Recent Peril has been completed, giving us one quest point, access to Mortania, the Wolfbane Dagger, and 1,406 Prayer XP, bringing our total quest points up to 48. I wonder why 1,406 Prayer Experience specifically, because that's a very weird number. Maybe those numbers mean something. But completing that quest that brought us up to level 32 Prayer and also level 45 Combat. The very first time in 10 years coming on over to Relica. It's really crazy to think that this entire portion of the map has been untraveled by me as a level 3 skiller in 10 years. And it's even crazier that the first thing we're going to do here is start to train some agility. Jeez. And we are finally picking up our last Mark of Grace, bringing us up to 260 Marks of Grace, which is the exact amount that we need in order to buy a set of Graceful. However, I am only level 57 agility, and it's going to be really annoying looking at 57 agility. So what I'm actually going to do is stick here until level 60 agility and continue picking up more marks of grace for a possible recolor, even though I do have kind of another idea of a recolor I want to try on this account that does not involve marks of grace. But we could always sell the additional marks of grace for Amelie's packs, I think. So maybe we might be able to make a little bit extra money on the way to level 60 agility. I might even get level 70. I'm not sure because at level 70, I noticed when I was looking in here, level 70 agility is the last unlock for the areas section of the agility guide, which allows you to enter the Ceridoman area of the God Wars dungeon. I've never done that before. I don't even know really what exactly it is, but it's the last thing that I need and it's for God Wars, which I'm eventually going to want to do on this account. But I'd much rather have my account sitting at level 70 agility overall than level 60. So I think we are actually going to stick it out until level 70 agility. This is insanely boring, but it's not too, too bad, to be honest. And finally, we are at level 60 agility. We can now use the werewolf and Sears village courses, but we are not going to be doing that just yet. We still haven't done any of the Falador rooftop course because I decided to wait till level 60 to do that because the marks of grace here in Canopus are really, really good per hour. But you start getting 20% less marks of grace once you are 20 levels above the course, which means that I'm going to be getting less marks of grace here per hour. So we might as well move over to Falador. Oh, we also have two lamps here. One is from a genie and the other one is from Count Check. I'm not entirely sure what I want to use it on. I kind of want to use it on Slayer, but I don't know if that's the best choice. But I guess that's what we'll do for now. It's not going to be too much XP, so it's not too big of a deal. Let's go one lamp on Slayer and two lamps on Slayer, bringing us up to level 11 Slayer. Currently have 322 marks of grace, which means that we can get a set and some Amelie's packs. Oh, and by the way, you guys can ignore this stuff up here that it says I have 177k XP gained and 10,000 XP an hour. That's not even remotely close to being true. I just haven't closed Runelight in like five days. And I spent a ton of time AFK while I slowly picked up marks of grace while playing the Black Ops 6 beta. Ten toes in when we standing on business. And here we are. Hello, Grace. It is time to buy one of each of your graceful pieces, which leaves us with 62 marks of grace left over to buy Amelie's packs. But I'm not going to be doing that yet. I'm going to wait until we are 70 agility and then buy all of the Amelie's packs. Now, let's see how this nice new graceful set looks. And it's not too bad. I really hate the normal color graceful. I mean, I don't hate it. I just like every single recolor more than I like the regular graceful set. I could go and get the favor to do a recolor, but I don't want to be using my marks of grace for a recolor because in the next video, we are going to be unlocking the graceful recolor from the speed running worlds. I've never tried to do these speed run worlds before, so I thought that would make some pretty fun content in the next video. But with all that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to drop a like below. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well so that you guys can see the next video when it comes out. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.